Now today we're going to be diving in into an interesting topic. Is it worth having a family investment company? But before we get to the video, let me tell you who we are. We're the country's leading stamp duty advisors. And if you have a transaction in progress or have bought a property in the last four years, there's more than likely that we can help you reduce or even recover tax if you've overpaid it. And if you're a professional advisor looking to support your clients with stamp duty advice, then please get in touch. We'd be more than happy to help you. Well, let's first deal with what a family investment company is. A family investment company is, surprisingly, a private limited company in which you can put all the family's properties, investments and assets so that it can be passed down to future generations in a tax efficient manner. But equally important, income and returns from those properties can be passed through to individual family members as their needs demand in order to help assist them throughout their lives. With rising property prices and complex tax rules, many families are exploring the idea of putting and pooling their assets in family investment companies to maximise tax reliefs, minimise tax rates and increase the growth of their capital over their lifetimes for themselves, their children and indeed their grandchildren. FIX can offer several advantages. Firstly, they allow for more controlled gifting. Assets inside a family investment company are still under the control of the directors, which could be the older generation and as the younger generation matures and demonstrates a degree of acumen, they can be brought onto the board to assist in directing investment strategies and indeed distribution of gains and profits to individual family members. The beauty of the shareholding structure is, is that it can be geared to family needs. Younger children, and note here that they must be over 18 in any event, can be given growth shares and not necessarily income shares, whilst the older members of the family could have income shares with no capital growth. And all of these things need to be thought about carefully as part of a long-term or medium-term strategy to ensure that by the time the older generation passes away, the value of their shares is minimised relative to the next generation. And so on we go. In terms of tax rates in 2024, as we stand now, corporation tax is at 25%. And that rate applies to both gains and income. If you look at income tax rates at the moment, together with the cost of national insurance, you can see the obvious advantages in having a family investment co receive returns on investment in both terms of gains and dividends or interest or indeed profits as against an individual. In turn, they can be reinvested net of corporation tax and thus achieving a higher return on reinvestment because more can be reinvested post-tax. Another advantage of family investment companies is control and flexibility. By holding investments through the company, you can control how and when assets or the return on assets are distributed and to whom in the family. It also provides a structure for a family to adopt a wealth management plan that can succeed through successive generations in adopting a microscopic version of those strategies and I would describe them as family operating structures that the ultra wealthy already employ quite successfully. And there have been a number of really good books written on this subject and I would suggest if you want to look at those in more depth we'll provide links in the description below. As we've already said FICs, Family Investment Companies or FIX for short, provide for succession planning. With carefully designed shareholding structures and the supervision of the board of directors the vast majority of the family wealth is never subjected to inheritance tax. Indeed many senior members of families end up living out of capital return which both reduces the value of their shares and ultimately their estate for inheritance tax whilst leaving the maximum return for the next generation to grow until they themselves go into drawdown on their capital value. There are however challenges in doing an FIC. You have to remember this is a corporate structure, it has to be properly managed supervised and authorised, capitalised, has to deal with all the accounting and tax requirements and may, in some circumstances, need a shareholders agreement to ensure that in the event of a dispute amongst family members, there are mechanisms for resolving them without creating long-term problems for the family. So let's look at those key challenges. Initial setup costs may be high. 
There'll be not just the costs of the company and all the legal advice associated with the share structure, but also the costs of transferring assets in, unless you're already completely in cash, in which case that is not necessarily a problem. But transferring a property portfolio in will have attendant legal costs, potentially some capital gains, and possibly some SDLT on the transfer to the limited liability vehicle. Corporate governance for companies is a lot tighter than it is for individuals. Tax requirements are generally tighter, but in the world of self-assessment, not so much so that it will create too much of a problem for you. The problem we have, and like all of us, FICs are not immune to tax changes. There may well be tax changes in the future which will reduce or even eliminate the effectiveness of FICs as a vehicle, but as things currently stand, such a change in tax would have to affect all kinds of investment companies and of course quite a lot of the financial infrastructure in this country, investment banking etc etc are based around the idea of corporate ownership and corporate funds. So although it's a possibility we believe it's unlikely. So is it worth having a family investment company? Well it depends on your specific circumstances. For families with a significant assets and a long-term investment strategy I would argue that it is absolutely essential. That is one of the few structures that you can use that are actually capable of mitigating or indeed eliminating inheritance tax on the death of the older generation. With all of these issues in mind, it's absolutely vital that you get proper professional financial tax and legal advice, indeed accounting advice, from experienced professionals before you start establishing one of these. Your plan and your plans and your strategies need revisiting at a minimum every five years and structures altering to ensure that the company still fits with the family's long-term objectives. Now I hope this video has given you some insight into the pros and cons of setting up a family investment company and if you found this helpful please give us a thumbs up and click like and subscribe if you haven't already done so to receive regular updates on this and other topics. I've been David Hanna for Cornerstone Tax. Thank you for listening.